Bismillahirrahmanirrahim Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad Wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam ima ba'd Recently I was asked to speak to give people an idea about who Akhwan and Muslimin is for it's very important for us to know and understand that the sunnah of the message of Allah is restricted it is restricted to Ahl Sunnati with Jama'ah those people who traverse adhere to the Quran and the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah and the madhab of the Salaf. How did the Salaf of this Ummah, meaning the Sahaba, the Tabi'een, Wutba'at Tabi'een, how did they understand this religion? And how did they practice it? How were their manners? How was their form for da'wah? Akhwan al Muslimin, are you a Habba? Akhwan al Muslimin is a modern day Jama'at. And from some of the benefits we gained from the ulama, Sheikh Salih Ali Sheikh Hafidullah Ta'ala, he was mentioning in a, uh, a, uh, a gathering or a conference with Sheikh, Sheikh Ubaidah Jabri, Hafidullahum Hafidu Allah Ta'ala. May Allah preserve them both and, and, and bless them both to continue on bringing us benefit as they are our ulama, ulama of Ahl Sunnah. And the Shaykh was asked about Akhwan al-Muslimin and Jama'at al tabliq He said they are Jama'at, Jama'at. And he said a difference between Jama'at, and this shows his fiqh, because he's an alim, that he said a difference between the sects and the Jama'at. The Jama'at, they are not a particular sect. For example, we don't say necessarily Akhwan al-Muslimin or Jama'at al tabliq that they are sects. But rather we say that they are Jama'at, they are groups. <coughs> And what is the difference between a sect and a group? The Sheikh answered by saying that a sect holds a particular aqidah, a particular uh, set of beliefs. Whereas a jama'at, like uh, Jama'at al-Tablik, Akhwan al they don't hold a specific set of beliefs. That rather they have a particular minhaj or methodology in da'wah. So I thought that was a very important faida for us to realize right off the get-go that Akhwan al is not necessarily a sect, but they are more of a they are more of a group because amongst Akhwan al you'll find many different individuals. You'll find some that perhaps may even worship graves. You'll find Sufis. You'll find Takfiris. You'll find those who even hold many of the beliefs of Ahl Sunnati wal Jama'ah, all except for maybe some issues in Dawah. So it lets us know that they have a broad array and broadband. Likewise with Jamaat Tablik. Jamaat Tablik, you have uh, generally their usul is from a Sufi and uh, perhaps Ashari or Diobandi usul, where they have some ta'wil or they change the meanings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's divine attributes and so forth. And this is not the time to speak in detail about that, but just to give us an idea. But however, they're not necessarily united on a particular Creed, because you'll find people who are Akhwani in their or, their political orientation with Jamaat Tablik. You'll find people that are even perhaps Tikfiri who go with Jamaat Tablik and make Khuruj. You'll find Sufis that are Khalis Sufis, that are pure Sufis, that worship graves going with Jamaat Tablik. You'll have all kind of individuals because they unite on a particular uh, methodology in Dawah. They unite by their pillars of making the Salat and trying to establish the Salat and having uh, Jalasat, where they read some hadith, whether it be fabricated or not, and they have their little ta'lim and, and, and the other aspects of their group where they make khuruj and they go visit uh, Muslims around the world. So this is their particular da'wah orientation, which distinguishes them from a creed or a particular aqidah which unites them, but instead you'll find many different individuals. With that being said, that gives us an idea about Jamaat al-Akhwan al-Muslimin and Jamaat al-Tablik. Jamaat al-Akhwan al-Muslimin, and I'll try to make it as brief as possible, very, very simple, so we just have a general understanding. Jamaat al-Akhwan al-Muslimin, they began with Hassan al-Banna, and he was a, uh, you know, a, a preacher and a, a dai, someone who called to Islam, but he had many issues in Aqidah 
he was very influenced by the Su Sufi, uh, very Sufi uh, uh, ways and, and asceticism and so forth. But things going to the to the fact to where he he wanted because of the situation in Egypt at the time he wanted to establish. They began by establishing social programs, almost like a social welfare uh, group where they did uh, you know maybe gave it, giving clinics or maybe uh, care and like a social organization. Then from there they took a more political stance and they began to develop and Hassan al-Benna, he came up with the principle, and this is probably the most important thing for us to know, two things about Akhwan al-Muslimin, is one, they are very much into politics. They are very much like a political organization of Muslims. And number two, that they, <clears throat> that they have a Qaeda or a principle which states, and this is from Hassan al Benna, and you'll find it in his books, that Ta'awun ala ma'atafakna wa ya'dhir ba'dhna ba'd. This is incredibly important for understanding a Quran Muslimin, this principle, and I'm going to break it down as best as I can that they believe in cooperating on those things in which we agree with. So that means someone who's a Khwani, he will work with a Sufi. He possibly will work with a Shia and a Rafidi and whatever group or sect, even if they don't hold the same belief, they will work together for what they feel is the common good in given Dawah. Okay, it sounds good. It sounds and it feels good to us. But is that the madhab of the Salaf? Is that how the early generations of this Ummah, is that in accordance with the Hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu when he said, If tarakatil Yahud ala ith wa sabayin firqa, if tarakatil Nasara ala ith natayin wa sabayin firqa, if tarakatil sataftariku hadhi Ummah ala thalatha wa sabayin firqa, kullaha fin nar ala wahida. Is that in conjunction with that? Because the Prophet ﷺ said, the Jews will break into 71 sects, Christians into 72 sects, my Ummah into 73 sects, all of them in the fire except one. And then they, they asked, Ya Messenger Allah, who are they? And the Prophet ﷺ said, Men kana ala mithi wa kana alayhi wa sahabi al -yom. The Prophet ﷺ said, those, the ones who will be saved from the fire, are those who are upon what I'm upon and what my companions are upon today. And the Prophet ﷺ said, Khairun nas qarni thumma ladhina yulunuhum thumma ladhina yulunuhum. The Prophet ﷺ said, that the best of people are my generation, then those who follow them, and then those who follow them. Letting us know that the first three generations of this Ummah are to be followed, and they are the best. And that is the Medhev at the Salaf. That's what distinguishes us from Akhwan al-Muslimin. Akhwan al-Muslimin, they ta'awun with anyone. The Medhev at the Salaf was no Ahlul Sunnah ta'awuns because we are united on uh, Aqidah, believing uh, in the Quran, in the Sunnah, the Messenger of Allah, and putting that before our intellect, and before our desires, and that we Go with the understanding of the Salaf of this Ummah. That is the Medhab of the Salaf. The Medhab of the Salaf, they didn't compromise aspects of the deen in order to cooperate, but rather they said, no, come all of you come to Tawheed. All of you come back to the Sunnah and let's call to the Sunnah and go forth on the Sunnah, the Messenger of Allah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. That's the Medhab of the Salaf. But what we see, why does Akhwan Muslim mean different with that? Because of that Qaeda, that Qaeda, that principle that is from Hassan al binna in which he stated that we would agree, we will work together on those things we agree on, and we will excuse one another for those things we disagree upon. That is not how you're going to establish the strength of Islam and return back to the Sunnah and the Messenger of Allah Because if someone worships a grave, and someone else says, no, I believe in Tawheed, there's no way they can work together. There's no compromise in that. Why? This one is calling to the worship of Allah alone, and this one is saying, no, you can use an intercessor, you can use Wali Fulaniya or wali falan, uh, you can use this one or this one and pray to them and supplicate to them and so forth. And the other one is saying, no, that's shirk that takes you out of the fold of Islam. So there's no compromise. Ahl Sunnah, we don't cooperate with the tikfiris. The tikfiris, they decree other Muslims to be uh, disbelievers without any right to do so, without looking at the the sharut, the conditions, the uh, the, the wabit, the criterion, or the mu'ana, those things which prohibit you from making tikfir. That is Akhwan uh, al-Muslimin is very influenced. Also, another aspect of them is with the Tekfiri. They have a, a, a strong relation with Tekfiri because they usually, because they have also the secret bayah, so they have, they believe they're also kind of, a, they keep some of their aspects of 
creed and their political agenda hidden. And they are some of the openers to the door of tekfir in this day and age because they, they've only been around not that long, perhaps maybe uh, less than a hundred years. So after Hassan al-Banna, you had Sayyid Qutb who picked up the banner of Akhwan al-Muslimin and took it in a more political direction and more and he revived as Shaykhana, Shaykh Rabi bin Hadi al-Madkhali, uh, Shaykh Rabi, he mentioned that uh, Sayyid Qutb is one of the revivers of the creed of Tekfir in this day and age. And me, myself, I've done extensive research on this and this I came to the same conclusion in my research after looking at some of the other individuals who influenced Said Qutb and how he revived the terms and the uh, his concept of Jahiliya and that all the Muslim societies were not Muslim society anymore and after him other groups went with their more extremeness so another aspect of Akhwan al-Muslimin as you'll find inherent in them is their relationship with the government they use politics generally as we see with the case of Mursi and what's going on in Egypt and may Allah rectify the affairs of the Muslims that you see that their minhaj is to get into politics, to form political parties. In Yemen, you have Jamaat al-Islah, and in many group and in many countries, you have these Muslim political parties where they are political agitators in order to get their uh, agenda. So it's not necessarily for them the importance of the Sharia, but for them, it's whatever means to get to the Sharia. So they tend to be more political in their orientation and willing to compromise aspects of the Deen in order to get their major goal. Whereas Ahl Sunnah says, La, we don't, it's not necessary for us to engage in those kind of things in non-Islamic uh, um, systems in order to bring about that Islamic goal. We don't form political parties and so forth and vote our way into uh, power and then like this, but rather Ahl Sunnah focuses more on Dawah and purifying themselves, purifying the community and helping the community to where the community will one day be strong enough to where they will choose and uh, be able to practice the Sharia and it will be no problem. Bi'idnillah. This is by the permission of Allah and this is the madhab of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. This is how Ahl Sunnah differs with Ikhwan al-Muslimin. So Ikhwan al-Muslimin, they also have the secret bay'ah as we mentioned and this is also something and there's there's extensive research out there that Akhwana Muslimin has relationship with the Masons even because they form a secret society similar to the Masons and there's evidence to support this especially from ex Akhwana Muslimin figureheads who mention about these things so those are some of the main things we need to know about them is that their emphasis on politics their emphasis on compromising the deen in order to the, the, the means justify the ends their uh, secret organization aspect of, of their group and that they believe in working with anyone even some of them to the extent of working with non-Muslims to achieve their goal but you will almost always find that the Quran and Muslimin do not like Salafis do not like Ahl Sunnah do not like people in the Madhab of the Salaf because they feel that those individuals are trying to preserve the religion by speaking against those people who innovate in the religion and they prefer not to talk about those issues keep those issues silent and let's just work together on those things we agree with and leave it at that so this is the medheb this is in a, a small nutshell and i hope i didn't take too much time and hopefully it'll be beneficial and hopefully that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will accept it and may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us of our sins and protect us from going astray and may allah bless us with ikhlas with the bad ala sunnah wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiya muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam